What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing a very quick uh, review of the game between Bournemouth as I haven't got around to doing it as my schedule's very, very busy right now so I apologise that it is so late. We're also going to be discussing some Manchester City news and uh, some bits of transfer stuff and everything popping around. This is just a very quick update video for you guys so yeah, uh, before I do crack on with this video do subscribe, that would be much appreciated. Social media links are in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my twitter and instagram email also in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorship for any videos or any general business inquiries do leave a thumbs up as well 200 likes that's the aim so any help towards that would be much appreciated and also don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments below so let's crack on then with a very quick review of that bournemouth game it's a game that city won by four goals to nil i was busy so i didn't do a match preview unfortunately uh, a match preview a match um what Watch along, live watch along for this uh, for this game. So I do apologise for that one. Uh, but yeah, I, I was busy. I was out doing some other stuff that wasn't able to do that live watch along for you guys. I will let you know in advance that more than likely this weekend I'm not going to be able to do a live watch along due to my scheduling things as well for the Newcastle game. But I will have all the build up and a review out after the game for you guys to look forward to. But so is life. That's just how things is uh, how things are at the moment. But never mind. Uh, so uh, very quick review. So Man City won this game by four goals to nil we scored three goals in the first half always what we're looking for we are always looking for a goal first 10-15 minutes that didn't happen but we did manage to get a goal on 19 minutes always puts us in good stead when we do get that opening goal and we get it in the first half as well it'll kind of go to our man at the moment right now just loose scoring goals he loves putting in impressive uh, putting in impressive performances for Manchester City and what I find really interesting about Ilkay kind of Gundogan is he's helping Manchester City here to not feel the burden of having Bernardo Silva in the starting 11 at the moment he's on the bench and there is speculation uh, with him going to Barcelona which I'll speak about in more detail in a bit but uh, yeah Ilkay Gundogan really stepping up there and he managed to get himself the opening goal with an assist for Erling Haaland and then 31 minutes City doubled their lead it was Kevin De Bruyne this time with a beautiful finish uh, with an assist there for Phil Foden and then 37 minutes let's swap them around it's an assist for Kevin De Bruyne and a goal for Phil Foden which uh, yeah uh, saw the end of that one then we saw Jack Grealish come on for Phil Foden in the 45th minute and then into the second half we saw Julian Alvarez come on for Erling Haaland Bernardo did come on in the 65th minute for Manchester City as well as there is speculation over his future of him going to Barcelona as he came on for Ilkay Gundogan we also saw John Stones get a good 30 minutes in his legs as well as he came on for Ruben Diaz and we did also see Rico Lewis come on for eight minutes at the end of the game for Kyle Walker so good for him to uh, come on as well and then Man City managed to find another goal in the second half as Jefferson Lerma put into the back of his own there in the 79th minute to give Manchester City a 4-0 victory in this match against Bournemouth. I said in my preview that it's going to be a difficult game, that City need to work hard, they need to match the intensity of Bournemouth, they need to match their willingness to win and if we can do that and make this game about quality and we can play the situation right then we can win this game and we can win this game well and the fact that we've managed to score four goals in only our second game of the Premier League season is great and it's showing that Man City actually might have been extremely correct to have had a very brief uh, pre-season with only a couple of games and there's concern there from the Liverpool game but we've really hit the ground running touch wood uh, so far in the Premier League season after that Community Shield defeat against Liverpool so things looking pretty good uh, as it is right now for Manchester City so we do take on Newcastle United next uh, away from home another game where uh, well, I'll speak in more detail in my preview but that's another game where City need to match the intensity of Newcastle so they need to play the situations correctly keep pushing keep pushing if they get that first goal push for the second if you get that second keep pushing for the third we know what we're doing and keep playing uh, the beautiful style of football that we have been doing for Bournemouth they go and play a home gap, uh, home match against Arsenal so that'll be an interesting game there and seeing how uh, Arsenal get on at Dean Court now in terms of stats for this game City had 66.7% possession compared with 33.3% for Bournemouth which is pretty high at the Etihad so I think Bournemouth will be pretty high happy with that one in terms of duels won 52% won by City and 48% won by Bournemouth so pretty close in that one and aerial duels as well uh, pretty close as well City winning 53% of their aerial duels compared with 47% for Bournemouth couple of offsides for Manchester City and one for Bournemouth and 11 corners for City compared with one for Bournemouth for this game now for attacking stats 19 shots 7 on target 
Four goals, not too shabby at all that by Manchester City. 19 shots, seven on target, not the greatest of returns, but uh, I think that's probably going to be the theme for the season. It's happened for the first couple of games that where we're having shots, we're not putting as many on target, but when we are putting them on target, so they are going into the back of the net and we are being clinical. So it's just working on getting them on target and finding them goals, uh, which I think City will look to try and uh, improve on as we head through the season. Uh, but not bad shot accuracy from Manchester City, if I'm honest, 37% isn't too bad. Bournemouth will free shots one on target a shot accuracy of 33 percent edison sounds like he's had a very boring game but there we go defensive stats eight tackles for city 10 for bournemouth 50 percent tackle completion rate for both teams four clearances and five interceptions for city 20 clearances and six interceptions for bournemouth of no surprise city with just under 700 passes with 696 passes at a pass completion rate of a very decent and very healthy 93 percent bournemouth with 363 passes at a pass completion rate at a very respectable just below 82 percent as well 27 crosses attempted by City at a cross completion rate of 37% which is very high for City and considering we've had so many crosses it's good that we were winning them challenges in the air as well shows how well we were doing with our aerial duels Bournemouth with 6 crosses connecting with 33.3% of them so that's 2 if uh, you are good at your maths and in terms of discipline 9 fouls each for both teams 3 yellow cards for Bournemouth and none for Manchester City and no red cards for either team the teams getting the yellow uh, players getting the yellow card sorry was Jack Stacey Chris Meth them and also Adam Smith for Bournemouth getting the yellow cards but this match does mean that Manchester City lead the Premier League table currently sitting in first we'll level on points with Arsenal who are in second so but if you could do us a favour that would be much appreciated City do travel away against Newcastle they're currently sitting in fifth unbeaten as well so that'll be a difficult game for us and it'll be a difficult game for them as well but at the moment reading pretty well for Manchester City six gold non-conceded six points perfect start to the season uh, just looking elsewhere for the other teams Chelsea currently sitting on four points Tottenham currently sitting on four points as well uh, Liverpool drawn both their games drew at home against uh, Crystal Palace at Anfield on Monday night as well so they've dropped more points they're already four points behind City after just a couple of games and you mark my words Liverpool will be looking at that thinking we can't allow City to get too many points ahead if that gap ends up getting to eight to ten points we're a very difficult team even at this early stage of the season to catch so Liverpool cannot afford to be uh, dropping too many points they've got a match against Manchester United uh, away from home coming up next Monday and Manchester United speaking of them hilarious sitting bottom of the Premier League Man City top Manchester United bottom just what the doctor ordered and it's just what you want to see with Manchester United taking a battering um, this uh, this weekend against Brentford 4-0 Brentford it finished at uh, Brentford Stadium so <laughs> things you like to see there a good weekend that for Manchester City uh, can't wait for next weekend's game uh, against Newcastle now uh, quick, quickly just speaking of transfers Bernardo Silva he's a player that I am expecting still to be a Manchester City player going into the match against Newcastle this weekend I'm expecting to be available for selection and I wouldn't be surprised to see him start more and more rumours are coming around about the doubts about him going to Barcelona if that is the case then it looks like he may well be set to stay at Manchester City Kevin De Bruyne has even been tweeting and speaking about it saying he expects Bernardo Silva to stay at Manchester City he'd be surprised if he did leave and speaking of Kevin De Bruyne we have had some news about Manchester City's new captains for the season Ilkay Gundogan replaces Fernandinho after he's left Manchester City so Ilkay Gundogan is the new Manchester City captain City now working hard to try and get Ilkay Gundogan on a new ca uh, contract our new vice captain is Kevin De Bruyne which is great to see and other players when these two players aren't available for selection or aren't in the team Kyle Walker Ruben Diaz and Rodri are the other options there for Manchester City's leadership group for the 2022 2023 season which is good to see big congratulations there to Ilkay Gundogan on becoming the new Manchester City captain so there we go that's the review as well as the latest news and transfer news for you guys to enjoy I'll be back again tomorrow for another Manchester City video so I've been JSGC thank you everyone for watching do subscribe to my channel do go check out my social media links as well that'd be much appreciated do let me know your thoughts what you make of this video in the comments below a little bit of a new style so if you do enjoy it do let me know in the comments below and i'll see what i can do and also don't forget as well to leave a thumbs up if you do enjoy this video and i'll see you all again tomorrow for the next manchester city video so i've been jsgc thank you everyone for watching i hope everyone is safe and well peace ciao for now